a freak winter storm slammed into Texas, causing blackouts for millions of people. And usually when there are blackouts in America, things go back to normal in a couple of hours. And it's not a big deal. You light some candles, you grab some flashlights, and then you tell a scary story about the woman who married the ghost of a little boy. But in Texas, many people are still waiting for the heat to come back on three days later. And things stopped being fun a long time ago. This morning, a deadly winter blast, tearing across the country from Mississippi to Maine for a third straight day. In Texas, the freezing temperature is knocking out power to more than 4 million customers. Power's out, water's out. There's no firewood anywhere, no stores open. Residents using blow dryers and heaters to thaw their frozen pipes. No water. Enduring freezing temperatures any way they can. Some dangerously using cars or grills for heat. For the millions bundled up with no electricity, this has been life for days. In this room in our house, it is 33 degrees. In Austin, Andrew Leahy and his wife finding ways to keep warm. You'll see a blanket here and blue scotch tape. We're doing anything possible to keep the heat in. All right, people, this, no matter what anybody says, is awful. I know people were praying for Texas to go blue, but not like this. I mean, is it too much to ask for just one apocalypse at a time? You know, COVID is bad enough, but now Texans have to deal with their homes turning into meat lockers? This shit is unfair. The pipes are frozen, temperatures are below zero, ice is everywhere. Forget Texans, this would be too much for Elsa. Let it go, hell no, this is some bullshit, I'm going to Aruba. I mean, you saw that news clip. Some people are putting up scotch tape and blankets. That's not how people should keep heat in their house. That's how you hide the weed smell from your RA. Now, what's been so devastating about this blackout is that when the electricity went out, it affected everything. People were struggling to get heat, they're still struggling to get food, and they're struggling to get water. Now, luckily for them, their leaders have stepped up in their time of need to tell them to stop bitching. Now a story making headlines nationwide. The mayor of Colorado City, Tim Boyd, has resigned after getting backlash over a Facebook post yesterday. In that post, he wrote, it is, quote, not the local government's responsibility to support you during trying times like this, end quote. He said those without power or water should, quote, step up and come up with a game plan to stay safe, end quote. He says the city, county, along with power providers, owe you nothing, and only the strong will survive, the weak will perish. Damn, okay. I mean, that's one way to be a leader, just telling your people to fend for themselves during a disaster. That's some next level. You know, even Immortan Joe sprayed his people with water once in a while. He's like, I've got a heart, come on. Like, here's a question. Why did this guy even want to be a mayor if he didn't want to help people? You don't become a doctor and then tell people, transplant your own liver, bitches! Why do I gotta do everything, huh? I'm a doctor! Now, the good news is the backlash was so fierce that this mayor immediately resigned. And honestly, it's probably safer for him now that he's gone. Because if you think frostbite is bad on your nose, whew, you should see what it does to an exposed asshole. Now, after the people of Texas are done DIYing their own power plants, they'll probably want to know why this catastrophe happened in the first place. And while freak storms can't be prevented, it looks like Texas could have done a lot more to prepare for this eventuality. Officials with the council that manages most of Texas's grid uh, says that outages are due to the state's natural gas suppliers not being able to tolerate such low temperatures. Power plants are not performing as expected, especially natural gas-fired power plants in Texas right now. Many of the thermal power plants, like natural gas-fired power plants, coal-fired power plants, and at least one nuclear unit, are not... Um, producing energy, they're, they're, they're suffering outages. Some people would point to the fact that uh, Texas had its power supply deregulated back in the 90s, and you would say critics say that because of these businesses were focusing on profits, uh, they were not necessarily concerned with maintenance and or winterizing the equipment to prepare for worst case scenarios like we're experiencing right now. Texas is the only state to use its own independent power grid. That means it does not have federal regulations that might have better prepared Texas for an event like this. That's right. The main reason Texas has plunged into darkness is that its natural gas industry has been crippled by the storm. And that might might have been preventable, except that Texas deregulated its power supply in the 90s, which was clearly not the wisest decision. I mean, trust me, 
as a man who lived through the 90s, you should probably rethink most of the decisions you made in that decade. But you see, this deregulation led to a lack of oversight that could have helped to keep the infrastructure maintained. But instead, for some reason, there are more people keeping tabs on Britney Spears than the Texas power grid. And this just goes to show you, you can't put profits over quality and safety. Money's not worth a whole lot if you have to burn it to keep warm. Look, the fact of the matter is, this situation is kind of embarrassing for Texas's leaders. I mean, this is the state that prides itself on its oil and gas industry, and now that industry has failed spectacularly. This would be like Jason Momoa needing help opening a pickle jar, which is probably why state officials and their allies on cable news are working so hard to blame someone else. The blackouts that are in Texas are being made worse by the failure of wind turbines, many freezing in the icy weather, cutting output in half, and it's raising questions about the Lone Star State's increasing reliance on renewable energy. Energy producing wind turbines are freezing, not working. The windmills failed like the silly fashion accessories they are, and people in Texas died. Think about if, if, if we were in the AOC world, fast forward 10 years, and, and everything is solar, everything is wind. If you don't have power to keep you warm, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna die. A preview of what could happen if the AOC vision were reified throughout the United States. And this shows how the Green New Deal would be a deadly deal for the United States of America. Okay, this, this is fucking insane. These guys are so desperate to just let fossil fuels off the hook, that they're blaming AOC and the Green New Deal, which, by the way, hasn't even happened yet, for something that's happening in Texas right now? But this just goes to show you, no matter what happens, no matter how far removed she is from the problem, conservatives can and will always find a way to blame the boogeyman, AOC. Rick Perry could have broken his arm as a kid, and he would have blamed it on AOC. Ah, oh, my arm! Damn you, AOC! Oh, who's AOC, kid? <laughs> she just hasn't been born yet, but you wait, you'll see. Now, look, we can have an honest conversation about this and acknowledge that it is true that many wind turbines in the state did freeze during the storm. But it's also fair to acknowledge that these wind turbines only account for 12% of the lost power in the state. Placing all the blame on wind power here is like blaming the Jets record on the water boy. I mean, I guess he could have handed out water better, but I don't think that's why they lost. And even though these wind turbines failed in cold weather, that doesn't mean that wind power is a bad idea. It just means that Texas didn't have turbines made for cold weather, the same way it didn't have oil and gas plants made for cold weather. I mean, there are cars sliding all over the roads in Texas right now because nobody there has snow tires. But I don't hear the governor saying, wheels are unreliable, so we need to go back to Flintstone cars. <laughs> So, clearly all this conservative anger at AOC and green energy, it's disingenuous. But the good news is, it's led to an amazing breakthrough that might just solve Texas's energy problems forever. Here at Texas Energon, we're developing energy that you can always depend on. Because our new technology draws power from America's most renewable resource, the insane hatred of AOC. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Our environmentally friendly extraction methods allow our turbines to convert the most paranoid rantings about Representative Ocasio-Cortez into consistent power that will never run dry. If anything, we might get too much energy. People like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, these are important people, whether we like them or not. They have followings and people listen to them. And the future is bright, because soon our technology will tap even more pockets of conservative anger, like cancel culture, mail-in ballots, and gay Disney characters. Texas Energon, their hatred is your heat.